Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Jerusalem proclaims that Israel will not sit idly by while the Western Finance Palestinian Authority advances radical anti-Israel decisions within international institutions. Israeli Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich signs orders to withhold Palestinian Authority funds earmarked for families of convicted Palestinian terrorists. A visit by Israeli Minister of National Security to the Temple Mount steers domestic debate and international rebuke. Israel will not sit idly by while the Western-financed Palestinian Authority advances radical anti-Israel decisions within international institutions. Speaking at the start of his weekly cabinet meeting, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, whose government was sworn in on December 29th, announced Jerusalem's decision to enact a series of punitive measures against Ramallah. <laughs> ביום חמישי התכנס הקבינט הביטחוני והחלטנו על שורה של צעדים נגד הרשות הפלסטינית שקידמה החלטה אנטי-ישראלית קיצונית באו"ם. הצעדים הללו כוללים סנקציות נגד בכירים פלסטינים, קיזוז כספי טרור והקפאת פרויקטים בכירה של בנייה פלסטינית בשטחי C, פרויקטים שמנוגדים להתחייבויות מפורשות שהרשות הפלסטינית נטלה על עצמה. אנחנו הקמנו ממשלה אחרת Netanyahu's announcement of pending punitive measures is a deliberate response to the Palestinian Authority's activities to advance resolutions at the United Nations General Assembly, while in tandem promoting an unrelenting campaign to involve the International Criminal Court of Justice to label the disputed territories of Judea, Samaria, the Jordan Valley and East Jerusalem as de facto Palestinian lands. This vote and request comes one day after the new Israeli government was formed, pledging to accelerate colonial and racist policies against the Palestinian people. We trust that regardless of your vote today, if you believe in international law and peace, you will uphold the opinion of the International Court of Justice when delivered, and you will stand up to this Israeli government right now because freedom, justice, and peace shall prevail. While the so-called draft resolution one was passed by the General Assembly, securing 87 votes in favor, major Western-aligned powers, including the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, Canada, Austria, Estonia, and Hungary, among others, have rejected the Palestinian ploy, asserting that it is unhelpful to advancing a peaceful solution to the conflict. We are deeply concerned at instability on the West Bank and call on all sides to work together to urgently de-escalate the situation. The UK will be voting no on the resolution Israeli practices affecting human rights of the Palestinian people in the occupied Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem, because we do not feel that a referral to the International Court of Justice is helpful in bringing the parties back to dialogue. It is also the position of the UK that it is inappropriate, without the consent of both parties, to ask the court to give an advisory opinion in what is essentially a bilateral dispute. It is important to know that Finland, the Netherlands, France, Sweden, Greece and Spain were among the countries which abstained in the vote, while Belgium, New Zealand, Ireland, Luxembourg, Poland and Portugal joined Russia, China, Iran and Syria in support of the anti-Israeli resolution. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu rejected the resolution outright, reiterating that the Jewish people are not occupiers on their own land, nor occupiers of Israel's eternal capital, Jerusalem. Israel. <laughs> 
ואינו כובש בבירתנו הנצחית ירושלים. ושום החלטה של האו"ם לא תעוות אמת היסטורית זו. Two of the expected measures which Jerusalem said it would enact against the Palestinian Authority and Ramallah have already been adopted. The first measure, which has already been enacted under previous Israeli governments, includes a deduction of funds from taxes which Israel gathers on behalf of the Palestinian Authority, in which the latter systematically diverts to families of convicted Palestinian terrorists who deliberately killed Israelis in nationalistically motivated attacks. According to Israeli Finance Minister Bitsalish Smotrich, the withheld funds will be diverted to Israeli families that lost their loved ones in acts of Palestinian terror. Hello, friends, we have to fix it. And today we are going to fix it. It's a very important day for the war, for the war, and for the war. There is no more war than the war of the government that has been working for the war of the war. Alongside the Israeli decision, Jerusalem has also revoked the so-called VIP credentials of the Palestinian Authority's top diplomat, Riyad al-Malki, in response to his activity to advance anti-Israel activity in international fora. تم سحب هذه البطاقة ومن معالي الوزير دكتور رياض المالكي وخضع لجميع الإجراءات التقليدية المتبعة على المعابر عند الجانب الإسرائيلي نحن نؤكد أن هذه الإجراءات لن تثنينا ولن تثني معالي وزير الخارجية والمغتربين والقيادة الفلسطينية عن مواصلة حراكنا السياسي والدبلوماسي والقانوني من أجل حماية حقوق شعبنا الوطنية العادلة Among the efforts to demonize Israel within international fora, the Palestinian Authority, which is recognized as a non-member observer state of the United Nations, was granted tailwind by the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, France, China, the United Arab Emirates and Malta when it called for an emergency session of the UN Security Council aimed at rebuking Israel over a visit by Jerusalem's National Security Minister, Itamar Ben Gvir, to the Temple Mount. However, this international rebuke contravenes with Article 9 of the peace treaty between Israel and Jordan, which was founded upon the Washington Declaration, quote, The parties committed to act together to promote interfaith relations among the three monotheistic religions with the aim of working towards religious understanding, moral commitment, freedom of religious worship, and tolerance and peace. Nevertheless, Jordan and the Palestinian leadership with the backing of the Islamic Operation Council, have historically demanded to maintain the so-called status quo antebellum, Latin for the way things were before the war, in which Muslims are granted exclusive rights to worship, while non-Muslims, including Christians and Jews, are merely allowed to visit the ancient site as tourists. הר הבית פתוח לכולם, עולים כאן מוסלמים, נוצרים, וכן, גם יהודים, גם יהודים. בממשלה שאני חבר בה לא תהיה אפליה גזענית, ויהודים יעלו להר הבית. Despite Minister Ben Gvir's decision to visit the Temple Mount, the official position of the government of Israel remains that it will not deviate from preserving the status quo, a position relayed by the office of Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu to both Israel's allies and strategic partners. The reason for Israel's refusal to alter the status quo stems from the position of the predominant stream of Judaism in Israel, led by the Uthra Orthodox community, whose rabbis unequivocally prohibit Jews from visiting the Temple Mount, as was explicitly echoed by senior coalition partner United Torah Judaism Chairman Moshe Gafni. The opinion is that it is not allowed to come to the house. I also said this to the President Ben Gvir. I said it in the past, I said it also today. I think it's not good. What's the reason? The reason is because it's a place where there are the Kodesh Kodesh. It's not allowed to come to the house, it's not allowed to come there. וכדי שיהיה מותר צריך שלושה נביאים שאין לנו ולכן כל הרבנים הראשיים לדורותיהם ולא אלה שמשתייכים לחוג כזה או לחוג אחר היה במשך 
כל השנים רבנים מהזרמים השונים ביהדות הדתית, וכולם מסרו את זה, אמרו שזה חיוב כרת, אסור לעלות להר הבית. ולכן, כאשר מדובר על איש ציבור, שאתה מראה דרך ל... לציבור כולו, זה לא בסדר. אני אמרתי את זה לבן גביר, אני מכבד אותו, הכל בסדר, אבל זה דבר שאסור. אני, העמדה שלי, שזה לא עמדה הלכתית, העמדה הנוספת, לא מרוויחים בזה שום דבר. סתם מתגרים בכל העולם, ללא סיבה. derived from the aforementioned rabbinical ruling, consecutive Western governments have raised the alarm over the visit of the Israeli minister to the Temple Mount, calling it an act of provocation. Among those countries, the United States labeled the Temple Mount a mosque, stressing that unilateral action that jeopardizes the status quo is unacceptable. So this is the, the, the mosque that you're talking about by the National Security Advisor there. Look, so the United States stands firmly, uh, and we've been very clear uh, for uh, preservation of the status quo uh, with respect to the holy sites in Jerusalem. Any unilateral action uh, that jeopardizes the status quo is unacceptable, and we will continue to be uh, steadfast on that and be very clear on that. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to start by thanking all of you for your prayers and would like to continue to encourage you. Pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavua Mevorach and God willing, we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.